Q&A with students on the subject of working with the astral body. Here, a colleague is asking, after beginning to work with the astral body, I also begin to wake up around 3 to 5 o'clock in the morning. Is this effect related to our practices, and what would be the best way to spend this time? Yes, they are related. As the astral body gains more energy, respectively, your etheric body agitates more easily. During this time, if you wake up, you can practice, meaning meditation, cleansing, those things go well at this time. Usually, the egregorial pressure is high at this time of day, especially if you live in a big city. But it impacts those who are asleep. Those who are awake are not impacted by it as much. Which is why this time is best for working on oneself. For reading or engaging in independent learning or practices, they yield effective results during this time. Marina writes, Is the true wish always the same as we just discovered it? Should we keep looking for more true wishes? Even if you undertake this task, dear Marina, you will end up in the same place, given that you have found your true wish correctly. However, if you would like to experiment, go for it. Although it seems to me that it would be best to digest what you found thus far and learn to work with what you have. Subsequently, you may understand your true wish better. It may very well be that the phrasing, the depth of comprehension, they might all change, but not the essence of it. Next, a colleague writes, the energy from an unrealized wish, can it get used up on a different wish that is easier to manifest? I want to get the same emotions. Yes, of course, this is what our work is geared towards. Your every wish is inherently connected to your true wish. Your mind knows that the wish is blocked, and the energy needed for it is unreachable. It doesn't cease to attempt to obtain the energy. On the one hand, the mind blocks off the energy until a certain point in time, and on the other hand, it keeps looking for forms that would be allowed to unlock this energy. The thing is, your mind doesn't know that it is the essence of the wish that is being blocked and not the wish itself. The mind works with forms and is every self-confident fool that is always thinking that everyone else thinks the same way it does. Therefore, it believes that if it is possible to find an alternative form, then perhaps the problem will change as well. No, unfortunately not. However, now that energy is released, there happens to be an additional amount of disturbance in the astral body that strives to be transformed. In order for this energy not to steam away into space, which would be the best option, or so that your smart mental body, or an even smarter buddhic body, doesn't shove this energy back down, from now on you will do the following. Your every wish that appears during the day, any wish to have a coffee, to take a walk outside, to call someone or to not pick up the phone, literally any wish that you catch yourself having, ring this wish through the prism of your true wish. You would do so by asking yourself the question, if I realize this wish right now, will this coincide with my true wish or not? Am I realizing my true passion or not in this specific wish? This way, you will gain the skill to compare everything that you do, want, strive for, for authenticity. Is this moment, my situational and simpler wish, is it true or is it not true? Maybe it was brought about by someone or something, just as a matter of habit, and in reality, I may not even want it. At first, without having this habit, it will be hard to check yourself like this. But if you make it a rule every evening to conduct such analysis of all your desires that have appeared during the day, which you attempted to make come true, and compare with the state, then after some time, this will become a natural thing for you to do. It's kind of like when you buy clothes from a store. Well, maybe it's worth trying them on first and not just buying them without checking if they fit. Of course, we can approximately eyeball the correct size, but it is best to try them on. It is the same thing here. We align our own energetic preferences. Is this vector correct? Am I following the correct vector? It will become a habit. Excite the integrative state of your true wish within yourself every day. As soon as you feel fear, immediately cleanse the astral body. As soon as you compare some minute wish with your true wish and detect fear, immediately cleanse.
Because if you did, in fact, feel fear, it is most likely that the two wishes align. You must understand that you haven't yet cleansed everything around your true wish. First, your astral space isn't cleansed fully. There are many spicy things hidden there. You have now seen the scope of work, and you saw that it's not a single construct. There are many of these batteries in there. These batteries are the canned energy that will always fuel that one fear that tells you not to realize your own wish, not to realize it under any circumstances. Because if you experience the state of satisfying your true passion and would prove it to yourself thrice that actually no one died, and neither did you, then to challenge you to change your mind and keep blocking this wish of yours will become very difficult. It would take finding alternative algorithms. It would take pressuring you with certain events which would be all costly from the standpoint of egregores. To form events for a specific person, and make it so that they don't simply engage in self-punishment like all other good citizens do, but to come up with something exotic. This would take a lot of energy. The egregores won't do this. They have their standard algorithms. They apply it three times, if that didn't work, now you're free. In this way, you will slowly but surely become free from their influence. It is understandable that at first it will be scary. Next, you may feel an additional feeling rising in you, which isn't just fear for physical safety, but something like a guilty conscience, things like, do I even have a right to do this? Is my conscience still in place? And so the third time around, the feeling you get is excitement. Who will beat who? The most important thing for you is to overcome these three trials, and all will be good. So yes, do it all, your understanding is correct, do it. Anastasia writes, Does the true wish have to relate to the proto-foundations, like freedom, power, and so on? Or is it more about the state and a wish that has some concrete form? It may be related to the proto-foundations, but it is more likely that this wish will allow you to fill up certain proto-foundations, which is the reason why you have come here. You came here for experience, correct? We are here to fill up our proto-foundations with experience. Namely, in a way that the experience we collect shouldn't be duplicating any old experience. It is very often that we find ourselves in situations where we form experience for ourselves, but then don't notice how we relive the same situations over and over again. Essentially, the experience remains the same, it's just that the scripts are different, but the form does not matter. What matters is the meaning. In this way, it happens that we repeat the same old story all over again, just via different scripts, meaning that what we invest into our proto-foundations, it reads copy, 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 all we do is clog them up with garbage, and they fill up quickly, making them look like they are full, but in reality there is nothing truly there. Here is the same situation. If we are to get ahead of ourselves, cleansing the proto-foundations and eliminating the copies is our objective of the third elements course. In that course we have serious, brain-wrenching techniques for this. But even now you can safeguard yourself from creating additional work by stopping to stockpile copies into your consciousness. You should start mulling this over now. For example, if your true wish is related to a certain intention, using the above terminology, such as power, love, freedom, then it's most likely that this is because you came into this world for personal experience that is to fill up those proto-foundations. Live through this state now on the second course. You are now working on the second course. Do not rush ahead when you don't yet know the techniques and the specifics of working with the higher bodies. Right now, your instrument is your emotions, your feelings, your desires. Work with them now, learn to work with them virtuously, then you won't have any problems with anything else. But if we work a little bit here and a little bit there, here we cleanse the astral space a bit, there we fix something in the mental body, this isn't what we want. We could improve our social life somewhat, we could improve our personal life, but we will not drastically change the state of the matters. Which is why it's best to work with this state now. But in principle, colleague, you asked an insightful question. Thank you. Kostya asks, if the essence of my true wish is freedom, 
and the vector of development of my consciousness points to chaos. Does this mean that the gods of chaos are at the origin of my consciousness? Oh, there goes another one. The person thinks on a global scale. It is quite possible. It is quite possible that this is a hint for you to look specifically in this direction. But remember that the path to the proto-foundation of freedom lies to the proto-foundation death. In the proto-foundation death, we do not leave our physical body, but what we do leave there sometimes is our social life. Don't rush to get to that stage while you have social attachments, or if you have unfinished business in the social world. You will not die physically, but your social identity may change drastically. Don't rush to get there yet. There are certain paths, vectors, steps, techniques. You will have time for it. But for now, solve the matters at hand. One can't leave for other social planes without finishing up business in the current one. Remember that. You will be pulled back and overburdened so much that it will take another couple of incarnations to deal with all of it on this level. Don't rush. Mary Lanner writes, Can the specific cleansing of the astral body result in episodes of panic, fear of death, like I'm going to die right now? The veil between life and death suddenly becomes very thin. And at first it feels like a relief, influx of strength, but then again, a submersion, panic attacks. Or does this relate to the buddhic body? But my true wish is that one. The reaction to it is panic. There is a block there. Yes, colleague. It speaks to the fact that you will have to cleanse. Same thing we just did. Work, 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 and work until the panic attacks go away. The problem lies deep. You have a lot of the conglomerates present. Because every time you have attempted to manifest your passion, you are always reprimanded for it. And every such instance, it always left an indentation a pain, a wound, and they are still present. The mind covered them up somehow. It told you not to pay attention and that it will heal by itself. And now we have opened all of this up and you understand that it won't heal by itself, that you will have to work with it. You have the instrument, I am, astral cleansing, and we will use these tools until the wounds actually heal, instead of simply pretending like they don't hurt. Ludmila. If I sincerely rejected all religions, could the religious egregores still have an influence over me in any way? They can. Attachments stay. Granted, they cannot influence you as their property after you consciously reject them thrice, a conscious rejection from you that is performed three times. But still, it doesn't prevent them from catching you based on other grounds. As soon as you show weakness, they'll be right there. The hooks are still left. You know, at some point they used to be bonds. You broke those bonds, but the plugs that those bonds go into still remain. Which is why in part this question is resolved by astral cleansing, in part by cleansing of the higher bodies, and presently by working with the etheric body and restoring your health, because it will take plenty of energy and, of course, adequate healthy emotions, and the skill of dealing with these provocations in the right way, without submitting to panic, so that they don't instill fear and a desire to lie down and do nothing. A healthy astral body is able to deal with this, because it is true. It is true. When the astral body isn't burdened by prohibitions, it is like a young, healthy organism. Who said I can't fall in love with this person? Says who? These are my feelings. Who says I can't? Are you grown-ups out of your minds? Says a teenager that fell in love for the first time. Here it is, true passion and it is forever. Who would dare question it? This is the state that we need to awaken within ourselves. This is only possible by having a healthy astral body. Moving on. I got pain in my lower back. What does this mean? It means that an astral mark has grown into your etheric body, which in turn pressures your physical body. This is why I tell you to move. In your case, you need to move your pelvis back and forth, back and forth, left to right. Get up and move your behind. Move it, move it, in order to break up this rigid connection between the astral and the etheric bodies. These marks like to attach themselves in the sacral region and settle down by the root chakra. This is where the most of the energy is. 
And the pain is greater in that zone, which is why when you're cleansing your astral body, just remember that you have a region that demands greater attention. Move it physically. Move it, move it. Apply the technique of chakra breathing. Breathe with your second chakra to remove this block. Bit by bit, the pain will go away. Don't rush, but the pain will go. Now it is an indication that there is a problem there, and this problem is related to what you've disturbed there. It could be caused by repressed sexual desire, or from being shamed, I don't know, maybe for masturbation. Different things happen in childhood. Different people react differently. Someone will shrug it off and move on, and others will have pain, fear, and horror for half their lifetime. Things happen. Irena writes, The whole time I had a sensation that someone grabbed me by the neck and was choking me. It also felt like someone was banging me on the head and I also had pain in my left arm. Same thing here, but your problem is in the throat. It may be that in the past someone asked you to keep silent, to shut up, to bite your tongue. All such phrasings would block your Vishuddha chakra. Next, Julia writes, I felt the desire of power and influence. In meditation, I saw my earliest memory in the uterus when I heard how my parents were on their way to have an abortion. And I listened to myself saying, don't do it or I'll take you with me. Good job. I'm stronger and I got scared that I'd kill them and I forbade myself to cause harm. Does this look like a self-ban and self-prohibition to apply force? Precisely. That plus a self-punishment for when you allowed yourself to stand your ground at the expense of someone else's will, at the expense of someone else's rights to harm you. This is quite possible. I had the time to finish my tantrum. This is excellent. Tantrums need to be had. Now, while there is still no skill to direct that heavy astral energy in the right intentional vectors, for example, undoubtedly, we will be learning to do it, now in the second course and later in the third. Don't be ashamed of throwing tantrums. They will allow you to break off the... You know, it is like an abscess under a thick membrane. When we're having a tantrum, we allow this abscess to burst. A healthy astral body will pick this filthy energy, clean it itself etherically and astrally. In addition, if after every tantrum you'll be entering the I am state and cleansing the astral body on the subject of a given tantrum, then the astral body will be healthier and you will release the pressure off of it. You will help it get rid of the poison that was released after the bursting of this abscess. When we disinfect these abscesses, we neutralize them. Or rather, our I am is the antidote, and when we return this energy to ourselves, it is not any longer the poison which it used to be. Now it is absolutely pure energy of creation that heals the astral body for you, along with the rest of your psyche. But situations can be different, so just remember that sometimes a tantrum may save your life.